Clothing Arts. Uh, Jake, thanks for joining me today uh, for the Facebook Live. The topic we're going to be discussing is tubs versus walk-in showers. Pros and cons of each, maybe what's better for your home or your situation. Um, so kind of let's dive right in. Yeah. So this is something we get asked a lot all the time, right? Uh, yes. For bathroom remodeling, it's very common. Yeah, we get lots of questions on, specifically homeowners always want to know, um, perhaps in their master bathroom, should they either eliminate their tub or their soaking tub and just have a shower? Do they, do they need both or in other hall bathrooms even? Okay, um, so let's go maybe some pros of converting your tub to a walk-in shower. Um, for one thing, it's just easier to get in and out of, right? Yeah, typically that shower is going to have a much lower threshold than a tub is. Um, you know, it's always um, worries concerned about, especially as we age, having to step over right. the tub side to get into the shower and bathe versus, um, uh, or over the tub to bathe, but a shower is gonna have a much lower threshold to get into. Yeah, and for accessibility for people who may have physical limitations, disabilities, maybe they're older, it's, it's better for that. We actually got a lot of comments uh, on the Facebook event about this Facebook Live with people giving their opinion about it, and a, a couple of them hinted at that, you know, the, the physical limitations uh, are a reason why they switched. I mean, that's a big thing in accessible design is yeah. the walk-in shower. It's, uh, we always want to try to eliminate, um, you know, the number one injuries in a home as we age is going to be trips and falls and spills and the bathroom being one of those areas. So we want to make that space extremely easy to use um, for, for everyone of all ages. So accessibility-wise, um, are there... Uh, maybe applications or materials that are non-slip for the floor or anything like that. You know, obviously there's grab bars and things like that you can put in, but what about like non-slip flooring? Yeah, like that? typically um, a lot of the molded shower bases, for example, from Onyx Collection, are going to have that texture to the bottom, so very safe to use. Yeah. Um, tiles sometimes, they can be a little slick when they're wet, so sometimes we don't recommend necessarily a, a tiled shower base. Um, and even sometimes when we have tiled shower bases, your curb on that shower is going to be perhaps four or five inches tall yeah. versus when we do use a molded shower product like Onyx again, mm -hmm. we can get that uh, threshold down to about you know, anywhere from a half an inch to one inch tall. Oh. So if you have any, um, you know, some, some foot problems, you have difficulties raising your feet even those few inches, mm -hmm. or let's say perhaps you're confined to a chair. Um, you want to be able to get in that shower and have a true roll-in shower and we can create those with that molded shower based product. All right, okay. And another pro, maybe it's easier to clean. Is, is, there, is it safe to say that? I mean... I, I would always say a shower is easier to clean than a tub. I, I clean both in my own home and the shower is easier to clean than my kids tub. Right, <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, and then also if you have a walk-in shower, it doesn't just have to be a little stand-up shower. You can really make it kind of a luxurious spa-like experience, right? I mean you can... Yeah, that's the, one of the great things if you are, for example, in a master bathroom or owner's bath, eliminating a separate tub shower in your, um, in your bathroom. You have a, you know, that big soaking tub and then maybe that kind of smaller shower. It's to combine the two into one large perhaps two-person shower. We're yeah. getting more and more requests for, um, and it's not necessarily for two individuals to use, but maybe you um, you want to have a chance to, a space to bathe your dog, for example, and give some room to spread out. So it's great opportunities there. Excellent. All right. Well, uh, maybe let's go through some of the, the negatives of just having a, a walk-in shower. First off, it's less versatile. All you can do is shower in it. There's, you can't you know, soak or anything like that. I mean, is that an yeah. issue that comes up with homeowners? Uh, typically, if there's younger kids in the home. Yeah. Um, usually for you know, those age groups, you know, five, six, seven or younger, those homeowners are typically going to still want a bath just for ease of convenience and, and bathing kids. And kids prefer a bath over a shower. They do, yeah. They mm -hmm. always do. You have kids yourself and you know that yeah. they, they typically want that bath. Yeah, um, it, because it becomes a pool for them, let's be real. Yeah. <laughs> Which is also the problem because the water splashes out and then you have issues. Exactly. Um, but no, yes, it's it's typically it's you know it's a little bit less versatile when you just have that shower. Yeah, and then there's also you know plumbing upgrades you have to make if you switch from a tub to a shower, right? It's a little bit more involved than what you think. Correct. Um, typically, um, a tub only has an inch and a half drain mm -hmm. leading from it. A shower per code needs a two inch drain. 
Um, so we will have to, you know, upgrade that drain line from where that tub was, if we're converting it to a shower, all the way to where that stack is located, which is pretty close to the bathroom typically. So it's, but it also gets into if is the area below that finished? Is it on the second floor of the home? Do we have to open up ceilings on the first floor to mm -hmm. get that, you know, that drain line upgraded to be larger? So all things that we have to think about. And I'm sure there's other code requirements too, or you definitely have to pull a permit if you're going to be doing this. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. If you're pulling out a tub and turning it into a shower, then you need to pull a permit or vice versa. So what about just replacing? You're going to replace a tub for another tub. Same thing as well. You are technically supposed to pull a permit um, for a tub shower replacement or upgrade. Okay. Because it requires opening walls and anytime you open walls, that's that triggers that building permit. Yeah. Okay. Well, a couple people on uh, Facebook commented um, something that we hear a lot. you got to have at least one tub in the house. Yes. Um, is that true? That is yes and no. Um, odd story. Um, in St. Louis City limits, I, I, for a fact, no, but I'm not sure about other municipalities, the St. Louis City requires one tub in the home. You oh. have to have at least one tub. Okay. No ifs, ands, or buts. Other municipalities you um, don't necessarily have to have a tub. They will let you have a sh only showers in your house if you have more than one bathroom. And you hear people talk about that um, for resale value. I mean, people think that if I don't have a tub in my house, I'm never going to be able to resell yeah. my house. I mean, that gets into the question of how long do you plan to stay in your home, kind of. If you're saying, right. I'm going to be in this house for 15 or 20 years, do what you want to do because in 15 or 20 years, chances are that next buyer will probably want to do some upgrades to that bathrooms themselves and they can put the tub back in if they want to. That's a good thought. I didn't even think about that. So, I mean, if you are going to be staying in your home a certain amount of time, it's not necessarily, well, maybe the trend or the market's going to shift to where it won't matter that there's not a tub in there because that just won't be the trend. You're yeah. saying that's because they're going to probably make upgrades anyway. Just let them put it back yeah. in, you know. Do, do, do I, I always encourage clients, you know, if, if they're in their home for that five to 10 year mark, maybe we want to think about keeping a tub for younger families to be able to move into that home. Um, at least one, maybe it's in the hall bathroom outside the, the bedrooms, keep the tub there. Um, but in their master bathroom, if you really only are shower people, just make a shower in there. Yeah. And um, I want to go back to kind of maybe the design style of, of the showers that you can have. I mean, you can have zero entry roll-in showers. You've, you've designed one before for a patient that was in a wheelchair, right? Yeah. That could just roll in. We've had several. Um, that project actually won a Chrysalis Award, yeah. oddly enough. Um, but yeah, it was a true roll-in shower where we did have to do several modifications to the floor joists and the, the structure of the room to achieve a true curbless shower. Um, but no, it's, it's a fantastic space. With something like that, how does the drain work if somebody's going to be, um, they may not be as accessible, so they're going to be like more still within the bath, within the shower, they're not going to be moving around as much, mm -hmm. the, the water has to drain properly. Do you locate the drain in, in a different spot? Yeah, we try to keep it either A, towards the center of the shower, or sometimes put more than one drain in the oh, shower, okay. so there's an op not an opportunity for any flooding or overflow into the bathroom. Okay. And another trend that I've seen that not necessarily deals with accessibility, but it's either like uh, they don't even have a shower door on the shower. Mm -hmm. It's just more Walk open or it's shower. just kind of a, just a small glass. What are some of the setup that it has to go in order to make that work? Because you think intuitively, no, oh, water's just going to spill everywhere if I, you know. You do, but I will say nowadays it's, um, you you don't have to have a huge shower to have a walk-in shower. Okay. I've, I've done a shower where it was a tub that turned into a shower, and we made a walk-in shower out of that. Okay. Um, it's just kind of being conscious about when you have the shower heads on that you're not letting water splash completely out of the, the space. But no, you can easily make a walk-in shower. The bigger the shower, the better for that type of situation, but you don't have to have a shower door. Excellent. What about people who want to keep their tub, but they, you know, maybe they're getting a little bit older, it's harder to get in and out. Are there lower tubs? Is there things like that that yeah. is a possibility for someone who still wants to soak, but maybe they have a hard time getting over a normal size shower? Yeah, we there's, there's a lot of different um, applications you can do as accessibility if you still want to keep that tub. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one being uh, grab bars, you know, having okay. grab bars that you can still take a shower 
in a, a tub shower combination unit, mm -hmm. but make sure we have some grab bars in there to help step over that tub. Um, they also have tub um, removable tub seats that you actually set across the deck of a five foot tub oh. that if you need to do um, for accessible reasons, maybe a transfer onto a seat in the shower, you can you know do that and still use that tub shower combination. Okay. What about walk-in tubs? I mean, are, are we still seeing a lot of that or is that kind now, of going away? It replaces the walk-in shower. I'm not seeing a lot of walk-in tubs. And, and at, um, it's interesting, at, at Mosby we love to explain the pros and cons to every yeah. design aesthetic and application. Um, the number one comment I tell clients that are asking for a walk-in tub is they've usually never used one, they're not familiar with right. them. So I say they are great. If you are a bather and you say, I have to soak, but I, I need to be able to get in the tub. They're tricky because you have to, you have to get into the, the tub when it's empty and then wait for it to fill up. So you're potentially a little chilly when right. it's occurring. <laughs> yeah. And then you have to wait for the entire tub to drain before you can get out. Oh, so it's a true. lengthy process. They're also fairly large. So sometimes we have to look at hot water um, heater upgrades to be oh. able to handle that much hot water. Um, lots of little, you know, things that they, we have to look at and it's not just putting that walk-in tub in, but there's other factors we have to take into consideration. So if you do have a walk-in tub and you're in the tub and there's some sort of emergency, you can't just open, you'll just flood the Correct. The you have, it actually, sometimes they won't even open. It oh, has really? sensors and it's, the, t the water has to drain before you're oh. allowed to open it. So that could be a safety concern. And, you know, you think it's going to be something that's going to be more accessible and help you out. It actually could be a safety concern as yeah. well. Um, and then at one time, Kohler actually did make, um, it, it was Kohler or American Standard, one of the plumbing companies, they made a classic five foot, you know, you know tub for a, the alcove tub that would be in a hall bathroom, that the skirt of the tub actually raised and lowered. Oh, um, so that's interesting. So you, you kind of could lower it to slide into the tub a little yeah. bit easier onto a seat and then raise that side up. So there's a much faster drain opportunity and some different options there. Yeah, are there some just main kind of factors that you always tell a homeowner when they're having this kind of debate come up in their minds? Is there something that you're always going to try to tell them to help point them in the right direction no matter which situation? I just tell them to look at, you know, how, how are you, not only to think about the now, how they bathe, but how do they imagine themselves using the space in the future? Um, if there's several clients that they are just bathers and we, if we want to get a bigger tub in the space, then we need to do a tub shower combination. Yeah. Um, or maybe if it's their empty nesters and it's just them too, we keep that tub in the hall bath and you know maybe put some experiences in there like a whirlpool or an air bath, and then make a really great shower. So if they're feeling the shower that day, then they have their bath, their shower that's great and has all the features. And if they're feeling a, a soaking tub with an experience like air bath, then they maybe step to the hall bathroom and use that that space. Okay. So what if you're you're going to be converting that tub to a shower? Is there a huge cost in doing so? Uh, in relation to maybe just replacing the tub? I mean, is it going to be so much more of an investment that it may turn people away? I would not say it's, it's a much bigger investment because I think some of the upgrades you would do plumbing fixture-wise that you're going to do in a, a tub replacement, okay. you're probably going to do those in a shower, conversion to a shower anyway. Um, but yeah, is there a little, a little bit more potential cost increase to you know, upgrade some of the plumbing? And usually individuals are going to add some some opportune features like a hand shower or a seat. Gotcha. And maybe look at some more decorative tile and design elements. Okay. Excellent. Well, um, just uh, any final takeaways for um, what clients may need to know? or um, Are there any new features when it comes to walk-in showers as far as materials or things like that? that We're we're getting more and more, and it's one of the reasons I love, you know, it, our design process here at Mosby is that when we do meet with clients that maybe are on the fence about one direction or the other, yeah. we will create multiple designs that show them, well, what if it was a separate tub and shower? What if it was a tub only? Or what if it was a shower only? Okay. And see those elements. Um, some different features we're getting, um, showers, for example, you, um, we've all kind of been familiar with heated floors in a bathroom. Mm -hmm. We can now trans, it's, it's code and they have products to transfer those into the shower base. Oh, so um, you can actually have a heated you have a shower heat, floor? Heated shower floor that also runs up onto the shower seat. So oh, if you yeah. have a stone seat in your yeah. shower, sometimes that stone can get a little chilly. So when you sit down on it, 
it's a little shock to the system. Right. <laughs> but if it's already been heated up and warmed, it's uh, it's it's kind of luxurious and nice. So it's, it, it, and some other shower things is we're doing um, more and more frequently. Um, I would say about a third of the time now, more electronic tub shower valves, um, where there's not a physical shower valve, mm -hmm. but a um, a digital touch screen that you choose your temperature, you select is it the hand shower, is it the fixed shower head, is it the body sprays, and then those connect to your phone. Wow. And then from before you get out of bed, you can turn your shower on and get it warmed up. So you can go straight from your, in wintertime, it's great because your, your warm, cozy bed straight into your yeah. hot shower. That's no excellent. waiting at all. We've got a question here um, from Noel. Is there a better surface to use in the shower, tile versus onyx? They, each of those surfaces have, uh, Noel, that's a great question. They have pros and cons to each. Onyx is a great product because there's no grout. It's mm -hmm. a poured, molded, solid surface product. Will never leak. Lifetime warranty. Though a tile has a much more opulent, higher end look to it. Right. You get to be a little bit more creative with elements and textures and designs. But do you have that grout line that can trap some dirt and might require a little bit of extra cleaning? Yes. Yeah. So we, we, when we do design, we show you what the different surfaces might look like. Um, but I go back to reminder, if we can usually create a lower threshold shower with the Onyx product than we can with Tile. See, that's a big thing for me would be cleaning it. And I think that Onyx is so good with something like that. It's so low maintenance. And it can, you know, there's so many different styles and colors that you can choose from. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a great product. I really like it because it's super easy to, to maintain. So We have another question from Stacy actually really quick. And she, yeah. she brought up one of my favorite items. She says, are there issues with draftiness in a walk-in shower? Well, that's a good idea. And the good answer good is yes. I remind clients who have never used a true walk-in shower without any door. So it's a doorless shower. It is like using a, or being next to a fire. You know, camping and you have a mm -hmm. fire. Whatever side is not facing the shower head is going to get chilly. Oh, yeah. Because the, the, um, the function of a shower is as that steam rises out of the shower, it's pulling in the cold air in the room. Okay. Through that opening. Yeah. So we usually take a look at maybe having um, um, a heater fan that's in the ceiling that's also blowing hot air into the shower. Oh, really? Okay. To try to make it the most comfortable space we can. Gotcha. So little experience elements that we really take into consideration when we start to design some of those things. Yeah, because if you think about it, if you're taking a shower and you pull a shower curtain open or open the door, you it's feel that chilly. instantly. Yeah. So you obviously have to take that in consideration if there is no door. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. Well, Jake, thanks for joining me today. It was a great topic, uh, good questions, and uh, if you ever uh, want to explore doing a project at your home, you can always give Mosby a call at the office here, 314 909-1800 or go online to callmosby.com. You can send a message to us on Facebook as well. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you.